If um, anybody's here today and they did not pick up their test on Monday, then you can come see me after class. Today we're doing streams, and we have one more day on streams. Um, the guest speaker I mentioned last time is next Wednesday. So today and Friday we're finishing up streams, streams with me. Um, I want to talk about this is a new program that we're piloting this summer, and this is this course, your guys' course with me, is one of six uh, classes that this program is piloted with. It's called River Hawk Review. And this is a program for students who need more time to figure out and to learn the material that's covered over the course of a semester. Um, so it's for people who have been trying all semester and just need more time in order to make the ideas come together. Um, so it's a, a sort of scaffolded additional study program that will run over the summer. Um, so this is a, a, a concept that um, our, I don't know how many of you have met the new dean of the College of Sciences. Most often, this is an aside, if you guys might have known the former dean, two deans back, Pod Tamarin, that's if you've been here for a long time. He once said when students were coming to visit him in his office, like, you only see the dean when it's something really, really good or really, really bad. Um, so most often, the average student has no interaction with the dean, but the dean has a big influence on how things run in the college. So, um, so our dean wanted to create this program to give students a chance who might have done badly on a final exam or done badly during the semester and basically just need more time to make everything come together. So we're going to run it this summer. Um, so it's going to be something like six weeks of um, of structured pro review of the course content. So that includes like homeworks um, and sample exams. So you would have to dedicate time over the summer to do this. Um, there would be a once a week online meeting, like video conference. So those of you who have joined the ones that I've done, it's sort of like that, except with like required participation. Um, so the, I'll be I'll be going over material, but I'll be expecting you guys to lead the conversation. So in small groups, so there would be something like a dozen people, like six to ten people, 
And you would sort of, you would commit to showing up for those. It wouldn't be optional. It would sort of be like a lecture, except it would be a small group and it's required. Um, and then at the end of the program, you retake the final. And your grade gets recalculated and retroactively revised. So let me just add a couple of oh, I can't spell. You have to come in in person for the final. Um, that's like you actually have to show up on campus. be somewhere probably at the end of July. Um, and so, you know, all of you know as CS majors, pretty much everyone's a CS major, not everyone, but most people, you need to have a 2.5 GPA in order to graduate with a computer science degree. So if you're earning grades that are C's, that's like below threshold. You're allowed to have a few C's as long as they're offset by A's and B's so that the, the GPA is greater than 2.5. So this program is for people who like need to need to improve the grade. It's not for people who want to improve the grade. Like, if you've got, if you've got a decent grade, you're done, move along. So this is for um, your, if, if you're, you're gonna, you would get a grade, if the grade is C or lower, then you qualify for this program, the pilot. Um, other details are you have to complete the course. So you have to take all the, the test. It's not, you know, this isn't like, oh, I'm not going to do my work, but I'll do this later. It's not that. You, you have to make an honest attempt all the way through. So take all exams, and particularly for this class, where the project is worth so much, you have to complete the project. Um, that's pretty much it, and the program is going to cost $250 which pays for the administration and the faculty time and running it over the summer. So this is like basically an alternative to retaking a course. And uh, the assumption is that you're like, not, you're most of the way there. You just need a little bit more time to figure stuff out. The program provides the scaffolding for that um, and some structure. You retake the final, you get a new grade. So the, I'd be submitting a grade change form based on how you do in this, this second final. Any questions about this? Yeah. What are the other five courses? There's courses in um, biology, the intro courses. Um, there's actually there's one other in our department, Computing 3, taught by Sarong Lin. Um, right now the program is only, it's, it's only going to be for faculty who want to do it because I, I can, I'm allowed to revise my own grades, but I can't go and revise some other professor's grade. That's a like, complete no-no. Um, there's uh, orga uh, organic chemistry course, and I think chemistry too, um, and then general physics too, which none of you guys would be taking because you're taking regular physics. Yep. So it's a pilot. So we'll see how. I mean, we'll see how it goes. I mean, we could do this and then like. Hopefully we do this and everybody is fabulously successful. That's what we want to have happen. Other questions? So, um, yeah. So I'm guessing this program to qualify is something like a C minus or lower? A C or lower. A, yeah. Yeah. Right, because C is right on the cusp. But like, so you guys know the grade replacement policy, right? Is it C minus or lower? Yeah, that's where I got that. Yeah, well, I could see in, this is something that, like, some departments, a C is good enough. And in some sense, in our department, a C is good enough as long as your GPA is above a 2.5. But uh, many people, particularly when you're later in the program, like when you would be taking this course, the GPA really matters, and a C is not good enough. Um, so, yeah, the threshold for this class is C or lower. So, like, do not bomb the final so that you qualify. Do not do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, that would not be smart. 
Okay, um, so just keep this in mind. We, uh, you know, the most important thing is you have to complete the class. You have to complete the class, take all the exams, complete the product. Um, okay, so we're returning to streams. Okay, when I hand this out, the first thing I'm going to do is have... Why don't I hand these out now so you guys have them? I'm going to start off. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fix this constructor. So we learned yesterday that constream is the thing that's built into Racket, which we are not going to use. And instead, the thing we're going to use is called stream cons, which sounds almost the same. That's the one that's provided in the problem set, like starter code. No. Um, okay. Um, so let's uh, let's go back and I'm going to write. I'm going to do some on paper writing of code, and then we're going to we're going to end up like defining some of these things and looking more closely how the stream code behaves. So the procedure that we wrote last time was we defined a procedure called stream enumerate interval from a starting number to an ending. But these are both integers. And what did we do? We said, first we did the test to see if we were done. So this is going to be a recursive, recursive procedure. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Let me, let me just zoom in. That's better, right? Yeah. Um, we, so this is a recursive, recursive procedure only with that trick of delayed evaluation. Um, okay, so if, if start has advanced beyond end because of the recursion, then we're done and we return the empty stream object. Otherwise, if we just put cons here, it would be building up a straight list like we did the second week of the semester. But instead, we're doing stream cons, which does make a con cell. And we're going to put the start number in the car position. And then in the critter position, we're going to, we're going to perform the recursion. Um, so we'll recursively call ourselves incrementing the start value and feeding back in the end value. Okay, so now this is different than um, this is different than our, our regular recursion in that <coughs> excuse me this recursive call is wrapped with a promise. The promise include it's it's a closure that includes the frame where start and end are bound to concrete values. So um, that that frame and then this um, this expression are wrapped up. In essentially inside a lambda, and then that is what is cons together. So this thing will immediately return if we were to say, like, 
uh, stream enum enumerated interval from 3 to 10, it would be like, okay, 3 is not greater than 10, so we're not going to return the empty stream. We're going to do this stream con. So we're going to get a con cell coming back with the car of it is 3, and the cutter of it, it's a lambda object. So <clears throat> it's effectively a procedure with the parameters are none, and the body of the procedure is this line of code. Stream, enumerate interval. We won't have evaluated yet it yet. So it's that whole line of code. Um, and then this procedure has a frame pointer to a frame where start is bound to 3 and end is bound to 10. And so the thing that gets returned is just this one con cell, which is the stream. Um, OK, so then what we did was, once we figured that we, we had to use stream con so the whole thing started working, we did, we looked at the car and it, it said three. And then we said, what's the stream cutter of that object? Why don't I just bind this to foo so I can talk about it, define foo to be that object. So then foo is this con cell. So if we say, what's the stream cutter of foo? Then what stream cutter does is, is it forces the thing. So it gets this procedure and applies it to no arguments. So it, it causes it to evaluate. So now we, uh, we evaluate this expression and we make another cons so we make another call to stream enumerate interval. Now the next time through start is going to be incremented and it'll be four and will still be ten. And so that will produce another console. So this cutter, instead of being that, becomes a new console. Oh, I'll just redirect that arrow. With a four and then a new promise, which has a new environment frame. And in that environment frame, start is bound to four and end is still bound to a ten, but it's a new frame. So as we ask for values, the, um, the, the, the con cells get produced and the computations are done. So that's the whole idea of lazy evaluation. So yeah, this is called um, lazy evaluation. Um, this process is, um, is called, the, the, the process of making a promise is called delaying. That's when you make the promise object. Does anybody remember the other word I used for the promise object? Yeah, I heard it over here. I heard it's also, the promise object is also referred to as a thunk. So it's like a noun. Yep. Um, and then the, uh, the, 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 the act of calling in the promise is called forcing. Um, okay. So that's the big picture. Let's um, let's look at some let's look at some operations on streams. Um, so we know how to make a stream of, of numbers. Suppose we wanted to um, let's make a stream of make a stream of like the the number. Uh, uh, all right, wait. Let, let's say we have two streams. We want to add them together. Oh, no, I know what we're going to do. We're going to, do, we're going to double a stream. So we're going to write a procedure called double stream. <clears throat> Sorry, question? No. Okay, we're going to make a procedure called double stream. I'm just abbreviating it double dash s. It's going to take a stream object. So what this should do is consume a stream and create a new stream with each 
uh, um, each item in the stream doubled, multiplied by two. So this is, again, hearkening back to the, the first second week of the semester. So, okay, we're going to see, are we done yet? So if the, the oh, I didn't put it on the list. Um, this list of all the stream objects. What's the thing that determines, what's the equivalent of null question mark for streams? What is it, Doug? Null dash stream, is that what it's called? Empty stream? We want like the predicate. No, but we want the predicate one. Yeah, it's missing. Is it empty dash stream question mark? Let's have to look at it. Stream dash null question mark. Okay. Of course, null would work because the way it's actually represented is empty list. But this is just procedural abstraction stuff to use the right names for things in case, in case we change the underlying representation, then the interface stays the same. Okay, so if when we're doubling a stream, if the stream is empty, if it's null, then we produce the empty stream object, which is doubling of an empty stream is the empty stream. That's the, that's the termination case. Otherwise, we assume that the car of our stream, the stream car, is a number and we double it. So we create a new stream uh, object. So we're going, this would be cons, but instead it's stream cons. So we're building up a new stream with doubling of the, the stream car of the input stream. Um, and then a recursive call to keep doing it. So then we just like double stream on the rest of the, of the stream. <coughs> of stream. Do you believe that'll work? Let's create this foo object again and see what actually happens. So let's say we define foo to be our stream enumerator interval. We'll go from 3 to 10 again. And then, OK, so now foo is, is at this point, foo points to the con cell that has a 3 in it and some promise object in the cutter, where start is bound to 3 and end is bound to 10. Um, now we say, like, we're going to define bar to be stream double of foo. What actually happens? I have to zoom out a little so we can see all of stream double. OK, so now I'm going to say define bar to be stream double. Oh, it's double stream, whatever. Yeah, I'm calling it's double stream of foo. OK. So my question is, how many con cells exist at this point? Related to the streams. So is it, like and then include, remember foo didn't go away. Foo's still there. Two. 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 Yeah. So foo's still there, but now bar got, uh, got created. So double stream got kicked off, and it was given the foo object. So it's like, OK, is foo empty? No. Now I'm going to do a stream con. So that means that a new con cell got created. I'm going to put in the car position two times the stream car of foo. OK, stream car of foo is three, so there's going to be a six in here. And now I'm going to recurse. So let's think, well, I'm not actually going to recurse. I'm going to build a promise of recursion. So in the, um, in the cutter position here, we have a promise object. And 
Um, the, the code for that, uh, let's zoom out again. The, 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 the body of this is this line of code. It's double stream of stream code. It doesn't evaluate it yet, of stream coder of stream. That's what the body is going to be. And so what's in the closure? Stream is bound to what? It's the original foo object. So it's bound to like foo, the one up here. So it, it has not examined the cutter yet. Nobody has forced the cutter of foo. Um, the car was already available to us, and it, we got the three and doubled it to make the six. But like foo hasn't been bothered yet, it, and so no one's looked into its cutter. Um, it's still a promise, and we just made a new stream that then when this comes back, bars here. Um, so that's so. At this point, that's all that's happened. So it's like it's as lazy as possible. Nobody's ever asked for the cutter of either foo or bar. So it hasn't been calculated yet. Okay. So now let's actually do that. Let's ask for the cutter of bar. So let's say we'll we'll use stream ref, which you guys are going to write in a minute. Stream ref one means like get me the 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 it's the zero, the zero index. So zero is the, the car of the first console. One is the car of the second console. So basically, I want to know what the next item of bar is. So that, well, I suppose you have to look at stream ref, don't we? In order, let, let's look at stream ref, and then we'll see what happens when we do this. So we'll actually draw it stream ref. Um, oh, actually, it's going to be bar. Of, I've got them in the wrong order. So stream ref of um, of uh, stream and n. All right. So let's let's write out this procedure. So the base case is going to be when n equals zero. We're just going to re return the car. I think if equal, all right, yeah, we can just use the single equal sign because we're back in scheme. If equals n zero, then we want the car of the stream. So stream car. Otherwise, we recurse. Otherwise, we call ourselves with the cutter of our stream and decrementing n. So stream ref cutters down the stream until you've decremented n to be 0, then returns the car object. So if we want stream ref of bar 1, it's going to go into the code. n is not 0, it's 1. So we're going to recursively, recursively call ourselves on the cutter. And so then we force this promise. And this promise says, call double stream again on the cutter of, our, of the input stream, which is the foo object. So now we end, we end up, stream cutter actually does the forcing. So then foo gets forced. It's going to make another call to stream enumerate interval, because that's what, what foo's closure is. Foo's closed over this line of code. So we have to go back to the stream enumerate interval. That basically generates the other console, where then foo gets expanded. So now we drew, drew this on the other side of the page. The four gets produced with another promise. Then we so then this this object gets 
produced here. And now we can call double stream on that. Double stream goes in, strips off the four, doubles it, makes an eight, and produces another promise. So at the point where we've done stream ref of one, we've forced both the streams. We've, well, we forced foo, and then we caused bar to generate its next element and, and um, have it um, ready. So then this stream ref will output the eight. Do you guys want to see this running? Should we type it in? Let's type this code in and actually see it running. Streams. All right, we need stream and numerator interval, and we need stream enumerate interval. So we're going to see this code again from start to end. If start is greater than end, then we're done, the empty stream. Otherwise, stream cons start to the recursive call. Let's make sure that works. Is it con stream? Am I still doing it wrong? It's con stream. Did I tell you guys the wrong? So it was right on the page. <laughs> Everything else is the opposite of the screen. Wait. Okay. So, but I could say stream car of foo is the th is the three. Yeah. So I had it right on the page originally. Okay, so cross it off again, and it, it was right the first time. Con stream. No, it's fine right now. So you never fixed it. That's good. Okay, so we're seeing that the prompt that that we've got one con cell. We, like we're literally counting how many dots there are. It's one con cell, and um, it's got one value in it and a promise to make more values. Okay, so now we're going to write double stream again. Double stream will take a stream. If the stream is null, then we return the empty stream. Otherwise, we make a new con cell for our new stream, doubling the head of the input stream. And delaying the the then the other the cutter is the delayed recursion. All right, let's get foo again. Whoops, we have to make foo. Okay, and now we're going to make bar, which is doubling foo. All right, so let's look at foo. So only the first, the only the car exists. The could the the cutter has not been forced yet. Let's look at bar. Same story. It's got a 
a car element, the coder is, is a promise. Now we're going to get that second item of bar. So stream ref bar second item is one. So it should say uh, it should say eight. Yeah. And now let's inspect the two streams. So let's look at bar first. Wouldn't be surprising that it's been forced and now it's um, in, in, in the initial cutter position is the next element of the stream which has the forced value and a new promise. But also, and here's the important thing, if we look at foo, we can see that its second item has also been forced. So both these streams are sort of unfolding in tandem with each other. Okay. So what I want you guys to do now is based on this code, and I'll leave this code on the screen because it's certainly relevant. There. Um, I want you guys to, to write stream map, which is kind of like what we did with double, but with a little bit more abstraction. So let me just flip to this for a moment. So you're doing something quite like stream double, except you'll be accepting a procedure as the mapping function rather than hard coding it for doubling. So please take a couple of minutes and write stream map, and I'll, I'll put that code back. OK? Um, okay, the, so it's very similar to this double stream thing I wrote. Um, it's here in the starter code. The, all this code that we're looking at now is included in the assignment download. It's not in a separate file called streams.racket like I just loaded it, but it's part of this starter code. So um, let's look for stream map. There it is. Um, Okay, so just like with double stream, we have the, the, the termination case of the recursion. If we've reached the end of the stream, then we output the empty stream object. Otherwise, we cons, we cons together a like, new piece of the stream. 
um, and that and the car is the result of applying the procedure. So proc is a, a procedure of one parameter that just like map. So we we um, apply that procedure to the car item of our input stream. Um, that like that's equivalent to the doubling. So it makes the, the you know three becomes a six or, but you're here you're passing in that procedure, and then the cutter. The cutter is um, recursive call, where we just call ourselves, handing the procedure back in, the mapping procedure gets handed back in, and again, this doesn't actually run. It, I mean, it doesn't run. It doesn't. It's not. What's the opposite of lazy? By the way, there is an official word in 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 functional programming for the opposite of lazy. Eager, the eager beaver. Trying to get all the work done. Um, no, it's not eager. It doesn't like go off and do it. It wraps with a promise and says, "Okay, we'll do that later when you when you care about it." Um, okay, so uh, let's look at stream filter, which is sort of the same story. If and this is going back to. Oh, oh by the way, here's here's stream ref. So that that matches what I wrote. That's good. Okay, so stream filter is a very similar. This is just it's just like the regular filter. You conditionally con. You're definitely going to do a con. Um, well, you, sorry. You can you conditionally either include the object that's being tested by consing it into the new stream, or so if your if your head item passes the predicate, then you cons it in. Otherwise, you recurse, leaving it in the dust. You just leave it alone. So this one, actually, if you think about stream filter, it's going to put together a stream that has got pieces of the original stream, right? Like double stream or stream map creates a whole parallel stream. Oh, this one will. This one will too. It recurses on the one that you gave it, but whenever you include a new, let me just draw out what might happen. I want to draw this because actually this is this is true of regular old filter as well. Let's see about what what happens with filtering. Um, Let's say let's say we've got this stream enumerate interval story from three to ten, and we're going to filter it. It gets started out with just the three and the promise, and then we're going to do um, a stream filter. Using even question mark of that'll be that'll be called foo. This is a procedure object, remember. Um, what actually happens? So, like, and actually, suppose I said I'm going to make this bar. I'm going to say define bar to be. A stream filter of foo. What's going to happen? It's going to. All right, let's look at the let's look at the code for stream filter again. There. Okay, so stream filter is going to receive our foo object, which has a three so far, and where our predicate is even question mark. So okay, the foo object is not null. So now we apply our predicate even question mark to the the, the car of our of foo, which will be three. So is three even? No. So then it, it goes to the else case and recursively calls itself on the cutter of our input stream. So it will Im immediately, and this is still eager because this recursive call is not delayed. Constream has the delay. This is, this is not delayed. This is a straight up recursion. So it immediately forces the 
the foo stream, because like three didn't pass, I am going to find the next one and cons it in to my new stream. So it immediately forces um, foo to generate the next object and then re recurses. So um, let me just draw that. So then it's like, well, okay, three did not pass my test, so I am going to recurse on foo, and foo will generate the four and a new promise. So now that's what foo looks like. And now we're back in stream filter. And we've, we've recursed on, on the cutter. So now when we come in, we're looking at that four with a promise. Um, it's not null. Now it passes the predicate. So now filtering does the, um, the, the delayed operation, the lazy operation. So now it does constream of the four to a, a, a new promise to keep filtering. So when we come back to the drawing, what has happened is this thing has finished, and bar is a four with a, a, a promise that's the filtering promise. This is the filtering promise. And this one is the enumerate interval promise. Does that make sense? So we've like eagerly walked down foo until we found the first thing that passed the predicate, and we build that into our, the, the beginning of our stream and say, yeah, here you go. Um, OK. So thinking about like wh how memory is really being used is a big part of this. Um, part of the idea of what would make this like valuable in practice is suppose like suppose we wanted to um, make a list of prime numbers. So we have a predicate called prime. We could now apply this to a giant interval of numbers. So we could we could um, we could say define like one million. That's not a lot, but let's pretend one million is a big number. <laughs> just, just like Austin Powers. A million dollars. Stream enumerate interval from one to one million. Um, that's the right number of zeros. Yeah. Um, OK, so that, that's our one million integers, or natural numbers. Um, okay, so if this were regular, if this were eager code, we'd actually generate the list of a million numbers. Now, of course, we could do that. A million is not that big a number. But if this were a billion, let's say, then you might not want to populate your RAM with a billion numbers, which if this were eager, it would do that. It would make the list. And by the way, it's not like when it's all done, you just have a linked list of the million or however many numbers, but along the way you've got all those like closure objects that are waiting for the thing to terminate. So a lot more memory is being used up along the way than when you're finally done. Um, so then you would filter this for primality. So we could totally do that with eager code, We'd, and it would just walk down the list and build up a new one. Um, but with lazy code, first thing is we can like make the abstraction immediately. We could define um, like my primes to be stream filter primality on the, in this case we're just going to cross out the definition, and um, the, the lazy interval. And that, so that will return immediately. And now we could start asking, what's the first prime number? And it'll walk down, it'll start generating like numbers until it, it finds one, and then we'll have that. Then we could say, what's the second prime number? It'll keep going. So we're only consuming memory when we need to. We're only actually doing the work when we need to. Um, so thinking about like when when this stuff happens is sort of crucial to understanding how streams work, and and then realizing that like 
generating this like stream enumerate interval is the code that generates the numbers. Stream filter consumes them, and we have these two parallel streams going on at once. Any questions? Is that a hand, Robert? Yeah. That is such a great question, and that's the first thing we're going to talk about on Friday. But you should think about between now and then is you can absolutely make infinite streams. So you can make recursions that never terminate, and that's totally fine. Because the, only, the work will only get done when you actually want that number. So think about how to do that, and that's what we'll pick up on Friday. Thank you. 